coffee is coffee, right? You can just go to your gas station, local convenience store, whatever, chain restaurant, wherever you want to go and just get yourself a cup of coffee, right? All good? No. Not all coffee is the same. And today, we are going to talk about that. So, let's get started. Oh. Looking at my my monitor there. I feel like I'm having a like a weird like a really weird beard and hair day. I feel like it's getting long here, curly, does weird curly stuff. Maybe I should go get it trimmed. The likelihood that you've heard of coffee is probably pretty high. It's a delicious beverage that a huge amount of the world's population enjoys on a daily basis but there is a big variation in quality across the different coffees. I also think it's safe to say that most people don't necessarily know what coffee is or, or where it comes from. I mean, most people know it's a naturally growing, occurring thing. It's, you know, some sort of a plant form, something that turns into a delicious beverage. So coffee is actually a fruit. It's a cherry and the seed or pit of that coffee cherry is what we actually call the coffee bean. It's not actually a bean or in the bean or legume family. In the process of taking that bean and making it into something that you can brew and create a delicious beverage out of is actually a pretty complex thing. So I'm sure you've probably heard the term specialty coffee before, uh, but there's some other terminology that you may not have had, and one of those um, terms is commodity or consumer coffee. Commodity coffee is coffee that's produced in large batches for consumer level companies, large companies, a lot of times places like your grocery store, unless you have a really cool kind of hip, badass local grocer. For the most part, this is coffee that you're gonna find in your big box grocery stores, um, restaurants, chain restaurants, fast food establishments, convenience stores, gas stations, etc. Commodity coffee is typically high yield, low quality, and it's generally grown, harvested, processed, uh, roasted and brewed with pretty much no passion or attention to detail. This is directly reflected in its cost, appearance, and most importantly, taste. A lot of times these coffees, um, at least when you're looking from the bean level perspective after they've been roasted, a lot of these coffees are really dark and over roasted, very oily, which is a bad thing. Um, but more importantly than that is the taste. A lot of these commodity coffees are very bitter tasting. They're really, really dark. They almost have a kind of burnt flavor to them or what you would call being able to taste the roast. Um, and a lot of times they smell like really bad burnt engine oil. Not good. Here's the deal though. If that type of coffee is coffee that you enjoy drinking, um, if you don't mind bitter coffee or you even like the bitter coffee, everyone's got different taste buds, you like that darker roast, that's totally fine, that is totally cool. That is your prerogative. Everybody's got their, um, you know, is entitled to their opinion and their taste and that's what makes the world go round. So if you enjoy that kind of coffee, by no means am I saying you shouldn't drink that. Um, absolutely you should drink that if that's the kind of stuff you like. But what I'm trying to do is create some understanding of comparison between those types of consumer level coffees and specialty coffee. Because of the way commodity coffee is, I think it's created a general misconception that all coffee is bitter or really dark or smells bad. And I think part of that stereotype or misconception is because a lot of people have never really been introduced to the delicious joys of specialty coffee. I think there's also another common misconception that specialty coffee people uh, like shop owners or baristas or enthusiasts like myself are just like weird, nerdy, hipster people that have latched onto the next, you know, big trendy thing. Honestly, it's kind of the opposite. Specialty coffee's actually been around quite a long time with a pretty huge following and it takes a lot of attention to detail, science, and focus to make specialty coffee what it is. Um, some of the smartest people I know are involved in specialty coffee. So now that you know that, let's talk more about specialty. Where specialty coffee differs is in the passion and the care and the attention to detail that is put into um, all those before mentioned processes. 
everything from the growing of the plants, harvesting, the processing that the, the beans and the fruits go through, the roasting, uh, and the brewing of that coffee all play a pivotal role in what the final outcome or the final flavor of that coffee is going to be. Some other huge factors that affect specialty coffee, and some of these are undoubtedly the most important, uh, and also this is where the science comes in, but the varietal of coffee plant that is being grown, the altitude it's being grown at, the type of soil it's being grown in, um, the other types of plants that are growing around the coffee plants, um, how it's processed, how it's roasted, and how it's brewed are all huge factors in how that coffee tastes, and those things all take an extreme amount of attention to detail and understanding of what is going on and that's what makes specialty coffee different. All these things I'm talking about right now are really deep topics that you could get lost in for hours um, you know doing research on and learning. Um, I've done quite a bit of that myself and I wanted to keep this video kind of concise and as short as possible for you guys so it wasn't long and drawn out and boring and overly scientific. Um, so I would highly recommend that if you have an interest in learning more about each one of those things we've talked about with specialty coffee, you know, the processing, the harvesting, the different varietals of plants, all those types of things, um, do some research, do a Google search, um, watch some videos here on YouTube. Um, and also I do plan on making some more in-depth videos in the future as this series um, continues to pick up some steam. So that's pretty much it. Those are the big differences on what separates specialty coffee from commodity or consumer level coffee. So I hope this helped um, you guys have a little bit of a better understanding if you didn't already know some of this stuff about coffee. Um, and I encourage you to get involved in specialty coffee in any way you can, even if it's just going to your local specialty coffee shop and trying different coffees and supporting them. I think it's it's a really cool thing. The people that are involved in specialty coffee are incredible people. The community is absolutely incredible. I was talking about doing some research, um, you know, a minute ago with all this stuff, but another place to do some great research is at your local specialty coffee shop. Coffee people love to talk about coffee. I guarantee if you go to a local specialty coffee shop, and I'm sure there's one near you, you could talk to shop owners, baristas, or other enthusiasts that are there getting drinks, you can talk to them for hours about coffee stuff. We absolutely love to talk about it. So I would encourage you to get out and support your local coffee shops and learn. So by no means am I a specialty coffee expert. I'm just a huge enthusiast that's really enjoyed specialty coffee for a number of years and I'm trying to learn um, as much as possible myself about it and just wanna share my knowledge with you guys. If there's anything you'd like to add, please drop a comment below so we can all learn some more things together. In episode two, we are gonna dive into the topic of brewing methods. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell for notifications so you know when I post a new video. And also, if you would do me a favor, like and share and comment on this video, I would really appreciate it. With that being said, we're gonna wrap it up. We'll see you on the next video. Take care, guys.